Any warning light concerning the braking system is unnerving, including the braking power low light, and rightfully so. Most of the time, this warning light indicates that the braking potential of the vehicle is greatly reduced or not working at all, which is a serious concern and an immediate call to action. The Toyota Highlander braking power low warning can be caused by an old battery, a faulty or leaking brake booster, or a broken vacuum pump. There are also some other, more general causes that we will cover, but the ones mentioned are the most common and should be ruled out first. E. What does the braking power low warning mean? The Toyota Highlander, like all modern vehicles, uses a complex system of diagnostic sensors, ECU, engine control unit programs, and different parameters to monitor if all components are functioning properly. And in the last decade or so, that includes the brakes as well. Now, if the ECU notices an issue with any of the braking components, which will result in decreased braking performance, you will get the braking power low warning. Accompanying this warning is also a message to stop in a safe place, and that's what you should do, even if the brakes are still working. Without knowing why, when, and to what degree the brakes have failed, the best thing you can do is stop the vehicle and have it towed to the nearest repair shop or home. Toyota Highlander Braking Power Low Causes and Fixes 1. Old Battery Even though the battery isn't a braking system component per se, an old battery will cause issues with the brake control module. And although an old battery will interfere with all control modules, for some reason, the braking control module is the most sensitive one in a Toyota Highlander. And from what I have seen, replacing the battery fixed the issue for the vast majority of owners who got this warning light. Also, when an old battery is a cause, many owners report that they couldn't start the engine. So that's another indicator. Now you should note that if an old battery is causing the braking power low warning light, you can charge the battery or jumpstart the engine and the warning light will go away. However, that's not a permanent fix, and it's a matter of days before the issue arises again. Now, at this point, you can try and remember when was the last time you replaced your battery. If it has been more than three to four years, it's definitely time for a new one. Still, my best advice is to take your car to a local AutoZone shop, where they will test and charge your battery for free. After that, you can replace your battery if it's faulty or continue reading. 2. Faulty Brake Booster Virtually all cars in the past 40 years have brake boosters that use engine vacuum to essentially assist you with pushing the brake pedal in. Without the system, you would still be able to brake, but it would take considerably more effort. Now those brake boosters are fairly simple, but the Toyota Highlander uses an electric one with a vacuum pump that lets you use the brakes when the engine is off. Now these brake boosters are under a safety recall, so before you make any further diagnosis, check if your vehicle is eligible. Also, when the brake booster fails, you will notice a hard brake pedal, and it takes a lot more physical effort to stop the vehicle. But unfortunately, diagnosing the issue properly isn't easily done without a Toyota-specific fault code scanner. Still, a braking power low warning with a hard brake pedal can indicate only the brake booster or the vacuum pump. Now, if it turns out the brake booster is faulty, it won't be a cheap fix. A brand new brake booster from Toyota costs close to $700. Alternatively, you can buy used ones, but those won't be less than $300 to $400 either. And since this part is a common failure, I would avoid that. As for labor, you can expect to pay around $250 to $300, ending in a total replacement cost of close to $1,000. 3. Faulty Vacuum Pump the Toyota Highlander uses an Atkinson cycle engine, which gets you a marginally better fuel economy. However, these engines don't make much vacuum in the intake manifold to power a standard brake booster. That's why they have these vacuum pumps, which sit on the engine and are powered by one of the camshafts. When the vacuum pump fails, which will happen sooner or later, you will notice a hard brake pedal and the warning light in question. A failing vacuum pump will produce an audible knocking or clunking sound making it easy to trace and diagnose. It's also important to mention that the service or replacement schedule for these pumps is every 120,000 miles, as recommended by Toyota. A brand new pump from Toyota used to cost $600, but is now discounted to $440. Moreover, the labor cost likely won't be more than $100 since it doesn't take more than an hour. Also, you can replace it at home fairly easily. Here is how. How to replace the vacuum pump. 1. Open the hood and locate the vacuum pump. It usually sits on the driver's side of the engine, right next to the battery. 2. Now remove the vacuum hose from the pump. 3. 
The pump is held down with three 8mm bolts, so take them out and remove the pump. 4. Now, put the new pump next to the old one and make sure the shaft is in the same position as it is on the old one. Otherwise, it will take a lot of trial and error until the camshaft and the vacuum pump shaft align. 5. After that, install the new pump in reverse order and attach the vacuum hose. Other causes of braking power low. Other than these most common failure points and causes, here is a quick brief of what else might cause the warning light in question. All of these are fairly cheap to fix and easy to check, so before you do anything else, inspect the following. 4. Low brake fluid level. I'm not sure how low brake fluid will trigger the low braking power warning other than the fluid being critically low to the point of trapping air in the system. Still, Toyota technicians advise all owners to first check the fluid before moving forward with the diagnosis. Also, check your owner's manual to see what type of brake fluid you need. 5. Cracked vacuum hoses. You find the vacuum hoses going from the vacuum pump to the brake booster. You can check the video above to see what they look like. Anyway, if there are any cracks in the hoses, the brake booster won't have any vacuum and will act as if it's broken. So do a thorough visual inspection and note that that even hair-thin cracks will cause problems. To summarize what we talked about in this video, the Highlander has a lot of issues with certain braking components and the warning light in question. And unless it's the battery causing the warning light, fixing the issue won't be cheap. However, if the engine starts up normally and the brake pedal is harder than usual, you are most likely looking at a faulty brake booster or a vacuum pump. And of the two, you should start the inspection with the vacuum pump, as it's a much more common problem on the Highlander.